losing to me would have like killed me on the inside, even if I didn't like openly acknowledge that core belief yet. You have like your person and then that gets taken away. You think the toxic response isn't excusable, but like I see why it happened now. and gentlemen we're so excited today to talk to winner of the bachelorette it's tino franco how are you my guy i'm good i'm good how about you congratulations it is <laughs> your first day off contract yeah, yeah so what does that mean you're allowed to talk to idiots like me for the first time yeah so essentially i just you know kind of have a, a little bit more freedom to do any podcasts i want to do any brand deals, post whatever I feel appropriate on my Instagram or Facebook and any media outlets. Um, yeah, it's just, it's more or less just a kind of a clean break from certain ties. I mean, I obviously can't just let it fly on all trade secrets, but yeah, I don't yeah. really know a whole lot of those. <laughs> well, your season ended abruptly for you, uh, shirtless. And I don't want to relive any of your emotional traumas, no, it's but fine. it's very fascinating <laughs> because I heard you on Courtney Robertson's podcast, which we love, and yeah, she raves great. about you. And um, I guess people are just interested to hear, you know, what got you into this world of The Bachelor. I'd love to talk about your charity work as well. You kind of have a, one of the more normal people from the show because you work in construction still, right? Yeah, you know, I went back to work, like, the day I got back or the day after. Uh, I came back, and my boss left me a voicemail, and it essentially was like, hey, man, you know, you've been gone a lot longer than three weeks. When are you getting back here? And I was like, I'll come in tomorrow. I'm really sorry. I'd, wild story, but I can't tell you any of it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, so you were engaged at that point. Yeah. Yeah, I... I mean, I went back to work. I came back really missing work and kind of my hobbies and life outside of that. Like, I really am kind of one of the worst people to have gotten as much screen time as I did because I just kind of got back and I was like, okay, I'm done. This is, this is a lot for me. I'm kind of just a dumb hillbilly. I want to go back to working in construction and doing the best I can on that. And Kind of got put through the ringer. That was a lot oh, of drama. You don't say. Yeah. You don't say. And by the way, yeah. you can scoot your seat back if you want on the okay. side. I don't know gotcha. if you if you got enough room there. Um, wait for this cop to go by. People think we do this in the studio. This is live yeah. on the streets. So, were you? I don't want to ask you any of these dumb questions. Like, were you surprised she picked you? But like, did you know you you were the guy? What was your yeah. doubt process like there? I mean, honestly, I think. And this is what I told Courtney too. I think like since like SoFi Stadium, and I don't even think I got that group date rose, but I think from that point, I think I looked at my producer and I was like, okay, I think this is it. I think I'm the one for her. Let's keep going. And like, understandably with some of the little tantrums I threw and stuff like that, it, it gets harder week after week because you're not like, it's, it's funny because sometimes the fans to me, uh, get a little paradoxical where they're like, don't you understand you're on a show, but then they want authentic feelings. And it's like, you can't really have both. Like yeah. you, as, as a guy or a girl on that show, like it's going to hurt when they're off with other people, when you have really strong feelings for them. So I, I knew, I felt like I knew really, really early I didn't really think a lot about what was going on with the other guys unless I was prompted to do so. Like in, you know, hey, how do you feel about so-and-so? Like with Jesse, hey, how do you feel about her being on overnight dates? I'm like, shit, I was trying not to think about it. Thanks, Jesse. <laughs> but uh, I would think about I would ruminate. And I, yeah, well, I would but be... that was the weird thing because typically I would, but they're both good and bad about like, keeping your mind on you and her but then when they want to they open up that can of worms but that was like kind of the the gnarly thing because it really didn't bother me too much when I wasn't prompted to think about it right but yeah I think the only time I really started to like have doubt or start really tripping about it was I think the day before the engagement I didn't know 
Avon already got sent home or maybe it was a couple days before, but I think I was talking to like my producer. Right. And I started like really melting where I was like, why is there somebody else still here? Like this just feels to me so obvious. It's just us two. Like what? And you know, I started kind of having one of those like panic attacks where you're like, holy smokes, am I about to get to the altar? And this whole thing I thought was set in stone. There was just somebody else she liked more. Like, I mean, it's that was the one time. Isn't it wild though, that people do propose thinking like, I guess you got to pursue it. Like you're running into a brick wall and hope that she's going to, you know, totally going to be into you. So at what moment did you know, all right, this is happening. Was it when she didn't, what is what she told me? She sent Avon home. (laughs) I mean, I was going to ask either way. Cause I was like, I, I have faith in what I see. I'm going for this. Like this, I told Courtney, I was 28 and single at that time, had a little rotten luck with dating. I was so convinced at the time. Oh my gosh. Like this bad luck I had has all brought me to this it's time to slam this, you know, like slam dunk this one home. And yeah, it was, you know, I mean, don't, don't regret any of that. I think. So let me, for my audience that hasn't seen your season, if there are any, it was one of the more dramatic endings. Of course, uh, you know, these things are always teased when we watch the engagement and then they go cutting back to the behind the scenes of the happy couple visits. So yeah, this uh, might have actually been the most dramatic, it, it very gnarliest, well, gnarliest ending of all time. Indeed, the most SoCal way to describe it, <laughs> yeah, the gnarliest ending. Yeah. So, so I want to tell you the narrative that like we consumed, and then I want to correct any anything I get wrong here. It comes out at one of the safe house visits that you were unfaithful to Rachel, and that was kind of the big fight was that you wanted to come clean but now since then you've said well you thought they that you guys were actually on a break so i want to like really push into clarifying that aspect so of it. i i think that's where it really does just get like super duper messy because i think it was less of me thinking we were on a break because if i definitively thought we were on a break i did nothing wrong or nothing uncool i wouldn't have told her because why would I tell you? Like, I, I didn't do anything wrong. I think it was more, I didn't know if what I did was wrong or not, but I really felt in like the time, like what I did wasn't cool. And I think I should tell her because she did stuff during the season, but I knew about all that, right? Like, right. that's what I signed up for. Like, I didn't need to know details of it, but it happened and that's okay because I went in knowing that. So I felt like to move forward with a clean slate and really build this like future with her, it was the right thing to do. Now I still stand by that. Like if we were going to build a future together, I think that was a good idea to tell her. And it just turned out, you know, after knowing that she didn't want that future there. And now in hindsight, I'm kind of glad we, we didn't try to build a future or waste either of our time anymore. Do you, did you feel like you were going to get exposed by the person you kissed at the bar? Or was it a feeling of guilt? No, I mean, it was more guilt because she never like threatened, oh, I'm going to come out and say something. In fact, when I, when I kind of told her, Hey, you know, like this, this isn't right. I don't know what my situation is with this girl. Like, I think she broke up with me you know, these things were said, but I don't know because I'm still going to be on the show for months. Like it was just, it was one of those weird things where it wasn't happening in real time. So she pretty much was like, dude, I don't want any part of this. Like this is a total storm that I do not want to be a part of. After you can leave me after out of you it. And this girl. Yeah. After me and her, she was just like, leave me out of your drama. And I was like, fair enough. <laughs> And what never was, what threatened. Was the feeling, what was the feeling though, as you're about to kiss? And there's always that moment where you know you're greenlit for a kiss. You know, did you have that moment like, oh boy, I shouldn't be doing this, or did you gen- genuinely? No, feel- that was after after that kiss. Because I think I think you know I was pretty pretty drunk, and like I think there was a moment where, um, and like, you know, I thought. I kind of heavily implied to the girl, like, Hey, I, I really can't be doing anything. And then we kept hanging out and like, she is like 
very, very pretty, like one of the sweetest girls on the planet. Uh, like we don't talk anymore at all, but nevertheless, I mean, these are just objective facts about her <laughs> and you know, at a certain point, you're kind of just like standing there with this person who's expressed interest with you. And you're just like, I just got dumped. Like, why the hell am I not doing that? You know, or like, why the hell am I not? So you did feel, you know, but then you kiss and you're like, well, <clears throat> when you're drunk, like, you know, you kind of convince yourselves like, I mean, you know, was it cause here's, let me tell you the fan fiction I have. The fan mm. fiction I have, and and I in respect, like my wife and I have had these types of fights where she's like, kind of uh, a- avoidant or a counter dependent. Where we'll get in a fight and she'll think we're broken. She'll be like, "We this isn't going to work out." And I've had to be kind of cool and be like, "All right, like you know, let's resolve our issues." And in hours later, the next day, she's perfectly fine. But it, it took a it took a balance of getting each other's uh, emotional regulations down. So my fan fiction is that Rachel had a hard time dealing with the anxiety and the stress of being bachelorette and it it would have made whatever fights you guys were having because you're in the private you can't see each other every day and you're you can't exactly relate to her because you're not the lead getting compared to another lady so in my eyes i'm watching this going this seems like a ticking time bomb where she's dumping you every fight no actually so (laughs) so you're you're close you're close so the pressure of being a lead is really really insanely hard and I'm glad I never have to deal with it. Um, but that was like our only fight really. So it was like our first and only, and it wasn't like really a fight. It was more just like, so anxiously attached prior to the show and prior to therapy, I will for sure take that one on the chin. That was definitely me. And that's hard for somebody who's dealing with the public scrutiny and all this pressure of being the lead on a show. So how would you describe yourself so, as anxiously attached? So I like needing her to respond to you right away. So it was kind of getting that way where we were and it, it, it's really extra hard when at first, you know, once you get off the show and you get your phones back, you're like texting each other and it's like, Hey, it's been like playfully, like I'll get a text. Hey, it's been like 20 minutes. What's the deal? Like text your fiance back. And you're like, ah, that's funny. You know, like, and you, you know, you kind of are like in that playful honeymoon spot. But then when it got hard and it got really, really spaced out and my theory behind it, and this would be totally fine. I don't find it insulting. I think maybe there was a point where she was dealing with a lot of her stuff and you know, she kind of like took like a look up and down at me and was like, I don't really know this guy that well. And he really doesn't go on Instagram a lot. He wants to just surf and ride his bike and not really be in the public eye. Hmm. I don't really know if I know enough about this guy to be engaged to him. Right. Understandable. We've at that point known each other. I think it was like at four months where the roof. Yeah. You're, you're running the, the bases backwards. Right. Exactly. Great way to put it. So, <laughs> so when she tried to dial it back and you mix that with an anxious attachment style and I had to watch back like, Oh yeah, I never liked so-and-so boom, a promo of her in jacuzzi making out with so-and-so you're like, Whoa. Okay. This is a lot right on the chin. (laughs) I get it, man. So what I tried to do is I tried to like, I tried to be vulnerable in the sense, this is where I'm, I'm getting to the in quotes fight, which wasn't really a fight. It was where I said like, Hey, you know, like I, I know I seemed really okay with a lot of this, but we've felt kind of distant lately. And now that I'm kind of seeing these promos and it all over Instagram and I'm getting all these followers, like I, I kind of need a little bit more. Like, how do we get back to that really affectionate place we were in? And this, because is, I this know, is post-engagement when you're just in the dark. Yeah, right when the show started can't airing. talk to people yes, about Yes, but issues. we're still together, right? Yeah. And then it kind of was met with like, and like, understandably, like I've been there too with, you know, kind of like when I'm going through my own stuff and the person I'm dating is like demanding or coming off to me is demanding more. It's almost like you that's need really a, hard. It's like you needed a lifeguard, but you're, but she's also kind yes. of drowning with yes. you. You're both like, you can't help yeah. each other. It, and that's a beautiful way to put Which it. Which is also a unique scenario. In most it, cases, it is so if my unique. wife's having a bad day, I pick her up. If I'm having a tough day, she can pick me up. Right. But in this scenario, you're both kind of like in this heightened Right. Stressful place. So 
that was more met with like, look, dude, I, I just can't, I'm going through a lot right now. This is like so awful for me. And like, it was hard for me, like you just said, to empathize with her being the lead. And I felt like there wasn't a whole lot of empathy for me being the person who, for lack of a better term, and I know this offends some of the fans, but who won the show because I have to watch my person like build these relationships and be very like intimate with other guys. And that's something she doesn't, didn't understand at all. Cause on her season, she didn't have to watch this back with some guy she currently was with whether or not she had feelings. It doesn't really matter. You weren't texting Clayton every, you know, so both of us, it was a big misunderstanding. And oh, you're saying because she never made it well, she didn't, as she far. Didn't, you know, like, like Susie would understand it. Right. But right, not, right. you know, so, so all in all, understandable position from her. But you know what? Also, it's like, it's tough for you because she got paid. You're out there like, you're not even getting the You deals. said it, not me. No, but like the truth <laughs> is, is like the lead's getting paid. They're getting good money. They're getting quadruple the following, and and it's just a tough place to be in. All right, we don't have to talk any further about it. But it's just, but it's just like it's it, it's a very vulnerable. You're very exposed, and I think I think generally people in your scenario all felt bad for Rachel. And even though you are you and her, you know, know the full truth, you're kind of left being like in a really rough place after it. Well, and the tough thing is, and me and Courtney, I think this is why Courtney, like really me and her get along so well. So her sim situation actually was like identical to mine, except the guy got caught, you know, kissing some other girl. Ben, right? Uh, I guess I, I didn't really <laughs> yeah, watch, Courtney but this, is what, this yep. is what I read and yep. she told me. So this guy gets caught and because, you know, he's the lead, he got to say, well, Courtney, you know, I want to, I want to, keep doing this relationship with you. And then they, I think dated for a little while, right? Where, you know, I, the ball wasn't in my court and I got slammed. I took an ass whipping on national TV, you took an ass which is whipping. fine. It's fine. Is that's it, what, it, that's but, how I was raised. But is it you do fine? something lame, you get your ass whipped, you pick back up and you keep going. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, take your punishment. I, it was an absurd <laughs> punishment. I think that's but here I am, very it's graceful good. for you yeah. to say, oh, we're right by the um, Huntington and Dog Beach. This is where we bring our old yeah, dog. Yeah. Old dog to the dog beach here. I'll turn around in a minute here. <clears throat> but um, I think it's fair to say, but I always say that the pendulum never hits its target, always goes past it. Yes. And there's so much more collateral damage. Yeah. So you... I'm basically, it becomes a Tino cheated, even though, I mean, would you, would you count that as cheating or would you just, okay, like, like, so what do you like, like, cause as here's audience, what, here's what to, I always ask people, like you're married. So you're a perfect example. Like if your wife gave you back the ring, would you think that you guys were still together and granted, this is after we tried a space break for a week and it landed at. I just think we should give the ring back and try to date in a couple months when I move to LA. What would you think? Well, the marriage is different because okay, put we it, were put engaged. It this, but no, but yeah, well, but in my engagement it was different too because we had such a long relationship. Yours, like, well, we said, that should make it worse. <clears throat> yeah, but for so for you, for if if Rachel said, if yeah, here's the ring, important. let's try this again when when in a few months but she has said that on record okay well in that said. case i would assume you are free to date other people so and here's the thing <laughs> that's where the timelines of all this stuff is so unimaginably effed up and that's what like i think fans really have a hard time like because they see everything they saw was four months you know like already happened months and months before right so whether or not that is a clean break, it wasn't, you know, if it, if I wanted a clean break at that time, which I didn't, I wanted us to work out. Um, I would have said like, look, if I'm hearing this correctly and you're saying, I want to give the ring back, we are done. Like to me, that is a deal breaker. I'm crushed. I am walking away. And then I would have been clean. Then they could have painted whatever. I mean, shit, I should have gotten it in writing, but I didn't do that. And that was one lame thing. And then two, it's a toxic response. If you did cleanly get broken up with to just go turn around, you know, a week later and go, you know, like kiss somebody else. Like, it's just like, dude, heal, be on your own for a little bit. See why this is so upsetting to you. Yeah. And that's what, that was part of my therapeutical journey. It's like, 
we we uncovered that you know there's some deep rooted what's it called core belief that I may have that that I'm unlovable, right? Mm-hmm. Well, once you you know, and I discussed with Courtney, that's probably like a large reason why I won the show because you know, like losing to me would have like killed me on the inside, even if I didn't like openly acknowledge that core belief yet. But like the, the whole, you know, like unlovable thing. And then you have like your person and then that gets taken away. You think the toxic response isn't excusable, but like, I see why it happened now. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Like not, not excusing it. It was, it was dumb to do. Like, I mean, I should have just said, okay, I'm gonna go hide under a rock for two months as well, this thing that's airs. that's why and... I get so, cause obviously I make content every day. And if I try to explain why I think something happened, people will say, oh, you're making an excuse for him. And I go, no, we're just explaining. Like, so you're saying you think you were feeling unlovable. So winning quote unquote would prove that you were lovable. Well, I don't know if I like consciously acknowledge that when I was on the, cause I, I was very convinced that oh my God, this is my love story. Like, this is my person. This is my love story. She picked me night one. This is so exciting. Like, you know, love at first sight. You know, and all this other stuff we'll forget about. <laughs> See, but, um, you know, like, so I think at the core, that's what was driving me. But that took a year of, you know, self growth and like exploration to land at. It wasn't like overnight, like day one, I knew like, Oh, I must win this. Well, you know, and like, honestly, as much as it sucks, you might have saved yourself 10 years of yes, exploration I because I've had to learn so much about myself and why I feel the way I do. I, I have had several similar situations where I overly attach to people because of external issues I can't control. Almost every time I felt like I was heartbroken was when I didn't have a job, I was trying to find work, moving to a new city. When I stripped away all of the environmental like um, sort of blankets that kept me warm, I was left trying to put all of my worth into a relationship. Yeah, you're using them as like a like a life raft. Yeah, yeah. and so when you go on a show where they take your phone and you don't have access to friends and family and jobs and the things that bring you value. I mean, yeah. for all you know, going surfing might be the most meditative thing for your soul. And when you take that thing away, you get exposed to your darkest. That's beautifully things. put. Well, and hey, we've no, all been there. Yeah. It, it is I mean, so accurate. Dude, I've been there out there. I've been out there dealing with family death, friends, deaths, and uh, heartbreak. And I've always found myself on the baseball field. I play baseball <laughs> and I've just been out there in the outfield or wherever I am. And it's, and it's a sport where it involves teamwork, but it also involves a lot of uh, thinking because you're you're out there by yourself in whatever position you're at, and that's where I found like my sort of oasis to 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 sort of um, decompress from certain issues. So whether it's surfing or you know yoga or whatever people do, when you put yourself in an environment, so many audience members think they would be better at this. And my response to everybody, and having not done what you guys have done, but my response is, you wouldn't be any better or worse. This is an experiment, and it sends everyone to their, their greatest fears and stress levels. Um, so when you watched it back, did you feel at all? Now you say you got what you deserve, which I think is, I think, um, I mean, but you, you, I'm you, just you saying you I'm square, you know, yeah. like it's, I'm not like, Oh my gosh, I'm, <clears throat> I'm still a victim. But I'm, is there you know, no bitterness that, that if, that if maybe the conversation <laughs> with Rachel went differently, you were, you were seen. And I think you're, Regain. I think the more people think about it, they're seeing you as like, ah, oh, Tino got kind of a bad rap. He's not a bad guy. And it's too often that audiences have to put people into a hero versus villain category. Yeah. And it's, it's just so, it's so interesting to me who gets those and like who the editors and the producers like, and I don't even know if they do it on purpose or like sometimes it just gains traction, you know? Yeah, because, I mean, there might be 10 scenarios where you're the hero yeah. and one where you become a villain. And, and Oh, I'm sure they, they could have. I I don't know, but I'm sure <laughs> they could have made anybody look evil. Like if, let's say, I didn't do anything and me and Rachel were together, like I'm sure they could have made Zach or Avon look any one of the negative feedbacks I got. You know, like you know, yeah, it, when, it, when, there's just a lot of footage and I don't. I can't imagine all the other guys were like, yeah, her and Tino, 
that that thing's set in stone. I'm just riding along here. You know, so, like I'm so, uh, I'm glad I get front row seats to their love story. They all were probably saying the same thing as me. This sucks. If it's Tino, send me home. You at, know, like, at um <laughs> at what point in your breakup conversation did you realize you were in? I guess a um. A, did you realize you were be getting jumped metaphorically uh, by the... By honestly, the... it was pretty early. Um, you know, like, I think I think when I sat down on well, the couch... Can we just... Let's take it back. So so you had mentioned to her text or email, like, that you that you had... That, that was on the someone, phone. Yeah. On the phone. Yeah. So at what point then was she like... Because obviously, production's like, no, we need to get this on camera. Same thing happened on Becca Kufrin and RA season. It happens every year. Get this on camera. So at what point was she like, let's just talk about this tomorrow in person? Uh, <laughs> so it was like... So, so here's the thing. When... Her and I had like the little spat where she was like, you know, like, look, I'm, I'm just, I'm checked out. I, I need space, whatever. Um, we pretty much like didn't talk for a couple days and then she reached out and then, you know, we, we kind of had like a heart to heart where I was like, look, I need you to do X, Y, and Z. And she did it all. And then we started recovering the relationship. But what, if you don't and mind, what, what does X, Y, and Z mean? Did, did you, were you not getting what you needed as far as like, because you were anxious? Well, we or? were just in a weird spot. And I, you know, like at that point in, you know, the jury's out, this is how I remember it. That's sure, probably the sure. most lawyerly hey, thing yeah, I can say here. But, and, and um, also just to interject, Rachel's I'm sure she's fantastic. It's not, she it's, is. it's, it's she's, everyone's trying their best. Yes. She <laughs> is, like I said, and I'm sure somebody twisted this one. She's perfect for somebody. It's just not me. Like I love, I, I love really think she will be an excellent partner to somebody else. If I had to guess, if you put like a gun to my head and I had to put place money on it, it'll probably be in a couple years when she's a little bit further removed from the public eye because that's a full-time job in itself. Sure. So, um, what were we talking about when I got jumped at the house? Well, oh, so you so, mentioned like, so I some... told her about a month after the incident happened. Cause I was playing with it in my head. I was like, shit, was it wrong? You know, I should tell her, like, I think this is the best thing to do is tell her. So bottom line, I tell her and then it like kind of goes radio silent for a couple of days you know, and I, I texted her every day, just and, once. And, and, and what's what's your feeling in that moment? Because oh, like I'd my be heart hit the floor. I was, you, I was every time your phone out. goes off, are you checking? Freaky. To see oh yeah, for sure. I wasn't yeah. focusing at work. I was like, <laughs> holy shit, I can't breathe. Like ninety percent of every day. Your mom calls. Get off the phone. Yeah, I'm for real, yeah, for real. Yeah, I know. So, uh, it was a couple days where I just texted her once, and I said like, look, babe, love you. Like, really sorry about this. Take as much time as you need. I want to have a healthy conversation. Just think it all over. So I sent that each day just once. Um, and then like day four or five, something like that. It was like, Hey, um, we got to meet up in LA. Um, you know, I want to talk in person. I'm thinking like, okay, rad. So I try to call her because I want to be like, okay, like I'm stoked. Where are we meeting? Like, am I picking you up from the airport? And she wouldn't take my call. And then I get like another text where it's just like, Hey, you know, like, let's just talk on camera. So, you know, I was, I was in hindsight, pretty smoked when I got that text. But, and, and of course but, at that moment, you know, all right, so this is, this is part of the TV show again. Like, well, we're back so here. I was at that point, like, screw it. I'm, I'm still going to fix it. I know the odds are against me. Totally. This is David and Goliath, but I'm going for it. I'm totally. going to try to fix this. And everyone in my corner was like, she just wants to talk. She wants to fix this. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, don't you get the what shittiest were, advice? <laughs> what you get they the shittiest were thinking. advice from your friends. Like, they're they're no, paid like... to know. So I'm like, there's... Or or maybe maybe that's what was the thought. And then the second, like, you know, like, because she was angry. Like, I mean, the second she saw me, it might have just been like, okay, like, boxing gloves up, you know. Um, and that's fine. It's four days after I dropped a truth bomb on her. Like, I think most people would have been pretty upset still. Um, so walked in there, I think in hindsight, pro I probably started getting defensive or just, you know, realizing, Oh shit. Like this is not, this, this is not going to go well. Um, when I was asked, like, tell me what happened. And I was like, 
I already told you what happened. Like, uh, that's why we're here. So I did. For the record. And then it was like, I kept getting repeated questions and I'm like, what, like, what are you, are you guys like trying to get a, a clip of me putting my foot in my mouth? Like, I'm just saying like, this is, this isn't an excuse. This isn't me blaming. Like, I don't, the blame isn't on you here. Nobody forced me to do anything, but this is what happened. And like, it just, it like kept like feeling like I kept getting the same questions. It was like, or like maybe, and I'm definitely not saying this was like anyone's intent, but like it almost felt at times like they were trying to like get like a tantrum or get me to raise my voice. And I was like, dude, like I'm hurt. I'm heartbroken. Oh, sure. I want I mean, this I, to work at out. That point, at that point, you are the collateral damage and you are the new storyline. I mean, I mean, for anyone who's ever scripted anything like this, you go, oh my gosh, this is the new story. Throw everything else out. Yeah. This is it. What can we do? And they're just going to try to get... Yeah, yeah, they're gonna heighten. And I'm that. sure that wasn't their, like, you know, intent. Like that yeah, would. But be, if it bleeds, it leads, and that keeps them. That keeps them working. You know. Yeah, and, I mean, and that, they got a job to do. Yeah, they got a job to do. And uh, but it's it's a uh, you know, did it lead you to any trust issues? Obviously, you've you've I believe you've said that you've made up with your producer, but did you have a falling out after that? <laughs> I mean, we definitely had a lot of color, couple full conversations with producers, and we as in me. Um, I remember, like Katie Thurston, didn't talk to her producer for a year after she, she because she felt like they kind of didn't have her best interest when that's when she when she trusted them. Yeah, I mean, we're all farm animals to them. Whether <laughs> or not they admit it, whether or not they even acknowledge it, it's just we are. We're like prize cattle. If you were playing another character, if you were playing a character as an actor, no big deal. But because this is attached to your character, people then, yeah. you know, like, did it hurt? Did you feel mischaracterized? Because it's one thing that obviously, yeah. obviously your issue at the very least was more dynamic than just you cheated on her. Like it's, it was more dynamic in the sense yeah. that you don't have, and this was kind of part of the issue with Victoria Fuller on her season of Bachelor in Paradise where there is this gap where you're not allowed out in the public that people can't exactly. judge when you know where the relationship and stands. that's where it just like honestly me and her should have just hit under a rock after our respective breakups when I heard when I heard my devastating news that more or less you know according to her wasn't a breakup like whatever I should have just like, if that was that devastating to me, I should just hit under a rock, said, like, look, this this breaks my heart. I'm out of here. We're done talking. And Victoria should have done similar. Like, you know, the, the thing she brought up that she was like, this is why it was over between us, me and Johnny. Um, you know, like, just, just walk away. And then... You know, unfortunately, because it, it even is weird for me to like, like the rebel in me is like, I'm not putting my life on hold for a TV show or anybody, but really like put the ego aside, bigger picture, step away from the scope. I, I think I really would have benefited just doing self work Yeah. to AFR. And if I show up and she's wearing the ring and she's like, oh my God, you know, these girls made TikToks about you. You're the heartthrob. Like, oh, we're happily engaged. I would have been like, all right, cool. And then, you know, but we could have a, broken up in private like I would have preferred. That's but, the problem when you're an anxious yeah. attachment but, is oh, you don't have what, the time. Like every moment is so desperate. Yeah. It's not yeah, healthy, exactly. No, but, but that that's exactly a great way to put it. And I'm like it's definitely not healthy, but that's how I was. Yeah, you're you're probably at some your job where you're supposed to be getting all these things done, and all you're thinking is, is she going to text me back? Is she going to text me back? Well, Which no, I mean it was even worse. Again? I I would think like, oh my god, like this is going to be so humiliating. Like the other dudes who got eliminated on the show, I mean they're on a time crunch. They're competing with other guys. It's understandable to lose on the show. This girl's quite literally going to invite me to AFR and say. Hey everyone, I got to know him better and I don't want him. <laughs> that was a uh, crushing. And that's my inner voice like that I've dealt with in therapy, like where you, you talk about self-talk a lot in therapy. And like, that's where I realized like, oh, there's, there's definitely a toxic voice in my ear where about think, relationships. So where do you think that comes from? I don't know. Or where are you as far as um, siblings go? Are you the oldest, the youngest? I'm the oldest. I think, I mean, there, 
the low hanging fruit could be like my parents were gone a lot when I was in like middle school, like sixth grade to ninth grade, because my little brother had like um, childhood cancer and he's totally fine now. He's doing great in Arizona, but you know, they were gone a lot. So, I mean, maybe, maybe there's some reaching explanation that, you know, that, that lack of like, um, well, parental love kind of makes you try to find issue. it somewhere so desperately elsewhere. Yeah. Um, and it, it doesn't excuse like your actions, but I, that that's like, could be a theory. No, it doesn't. Um, but the whole idea that, you know, I think what's the most important thing when, when you have these conversations is, is to like, think about where your blind spots are. So many people go through life, not being exposed to their blind spots, not being exposed to what trips them up or triggers them. And it's, a, it's good to know because you can heal. And I just have this core belief that we're all spirits that like we chose to come here to battle these issues. Mm. Like I, I'm very similar to you where I, I, until my current relationship, which started in my late twenties, but even into my mid thirties, I was still having these same issues where I'd get not necessarily jealous, but super anxious yeah. if I don't hear back from her right away. And, yeah, it is. And, it's weird. And as a guy, you just come off like some thing. controlling asshole, yeah. but it's like, and it is an issue, but it's the motivation behind it is love. It's just not explained in a healthy way. Yeah. And what I'll say about my wife is that she's not the jealous type. And as soon as I was able to like have these conversations where it was so hard to get the, these words out of my throat because it was like a stranglehold on me, mm -hmm. as soon as I was able to talk to her about it, she, she was able to give me what I needed, but not in a sort of like, not in a way where it's like, um, making not, not, you know, uh, putting a bandaid on my issues. Yeah. I, I had to show up and, 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 and realize it like, was real healing. Yeah. Real yeah. healing. Yeah. And yeah. not just like finding someone who's codependent that can, cover up your issues it's about like exposing them and then still loving each other afterwards yeah. and not every relationship survives that and that's fine too so i but i will say i have wanted to talk to you so long about this because i just watched the show and maybe as a guy i empathize with what the men go through because even though people say you signed up for it, it's like you sign up to go on a cruise. You can still shit your pants after you eat the food. Yeah. Just because you sign up for it doesn't mean you know how you're going to react to it. But when I've been shamed by different communities online, as it's happened when you do stand-up comedy, um, usually I get super bitter afterwards because it um, because it just feels like there's a mischaracterization of you when when there is a group shame happening. Do you, do you feel any bitterness towards how the fans treated you? No, honestly, I, I say this every time and I don't know if like people think I'm pandering to the fans, but like, you know me, like I'm, I'm kind of blind. I'm like occasionally a dick. Like I don't, I don't really like filter what I say, but like my experience with the fans was overwhelmingly positive. Like after the AF, and I think it's because people generally really, even if they dislike what I did. I think they generally saw like authenticity out of like, look, he came, he apologized. Like, you know, when, when I came on stage at AFR and it was funny cause you can tell the fans who just went like what, you know, um, r radio noise, like, and just like devil, you know, like flames around me, yeah. like, and didn't listen to anything I said, but I came up on stage and I don't know if you can see this on YouTube because maybe it would have made me look, I don't know. But, uh, you know, like I came up on stage and there were people I remember, I think, in my corner who were like, you need to go and set the record straight, tell your side. And I was like, no, 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 no. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to say, Rachel, I'm really sorry. And you know what? I really appreciate how nice you were to me on the show because you were. It was really fun. I know we didn't want this to end this way. And I'm sorry I put you in this position. And... That was my goal. I was just going to like, and oh, I wanted to apologize because like I, you know, I, I think she felt like I was like blaming her and I was just like, look, and I'm, I'm sorry you like, I made you feel that I, I was putting this on you. I don't think this is your fault. And that's when like the fight blew up because she was like, you did put it on me. And then, you know, the rest is history, but it. It just is one of those things where, you know, the fans, I think, just looked at that and was like, boy, like, he doesn't, he's not really acting like a dick. Yeah, you're not trying to we, win. You know, but like, the, 
you guys have been trying to make us feel like this guy is a dick for a month. And he might be like in this, but he's not really being one right here. So I think overwhelmingly it was nice. And then the, the Avon thing really sealed it because they were like, okay, even if we don't like what he did, we don't like bullying 10 times worse. And that was for sure bullying. Cause like, what am course, I supposed those, to do? For those that don't know, like you, you were still sitting there when Avon oh, came out yeah. live on stage and asked Rachel on a date, which felt super contrived. They walk off and you're just sitting there like, well, and all right. It's, it's so like, it's funny. Cause like at that point we'd been broken up for, you know, however long it, it's none of my business who she dates. And you know, I like Avon. I talk to Avon pretty frequently. And I was just like, I was like, what, what was the point of this outside of trying to like make me go jump off a bridge or be a victim. I don't know. Yeah. But I was just like, what, did you want me to jump up and fight him? Like, I were you trying was... to get a knee jerk reaction out of me? Cause I was just like, what? Yeah. What? Like, yeah, it actually made go look, date. It made I don't care. Like, like she, <laughs> somebody said she's, or I think it's out that she went on paradise. Great. I find love. So what, be se happy. what season know. are you going on paradise? Uh, what I are the odds? Give me the odds. If I, if Probably I was a man. zero. I mean, there's no such thing as zero. It's I, I yeah. <laughs> I mean, if they offered me like a ton of money, I, well, I'd Michael, be like Michael shit A's, on me. Whatever. Michael A said he went to paradise for thirty five thousand dollars guaranteed. Yeah, two week vacation. Maybe you find love. Maybe you get some redemption. Uh, Let's start yeah, off at I mean, twenty. That's a lot of mo would money. Would you think twenty grand? No, for I would for sure do it for more than Michael. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Like it would have to be more than that, but um, uh, I'll, I'll get the GoFundMe account. Right? <laughs> so let's see. One thing I wanted to ask you about. So you said you your younger brother had childhood cancer, and uh, is that how you got into the Ronald McDonald charity? Yes. Yeah. So I I went there as a kid because it's like a summer camp for families that are dealing with childhood cancer. So it's the kids and the sibling who has cancer and they have medical facilities. And it's, it's essentially just a summer camp that lets the kids kind of be a little out of that world where you're no longer the family with cancer because you're surrounded by families with cancer. So it's like everyone's relatable. It's really quite magical. When you're in a world with cancer where you're in the hospital and you know yeah everyone's treating you like you've like you clearly get all this attention you but as a, a child sympathy yeah it's it tough. Might, it, while it while it might be warranted it might be tough to cope with that and you just want to blend in and not feel like this yeah exactly that that's the best i i always like you know and i love my brother and i think it like that the walking with anthony event i went to last week which is um, my friend anthony is uh uh, paralyzed from the waist down. He used to be neck down and he's made a tremendous progress, wow. like un, unfounded progress. Um, he jumped into a sandbar in Florida wow. and he was totally like fine, jumped into a sandbar and it was neck down and through Head first he jumped in. Yeah. Yeah. He was just jumping into the water in Florida, hit a sandbar. Oh, you're saying he was, Oh like, my gosh. So, that sounds horrible. I know. I know. Trust me. It's just as somebody who surfs as much as I do, that freaks me out. But wow. so you hang out with people like that in the Camp Ronald McDonald kids and it gives you just so much perspective. Like I hang out with Anthony and I, I walk out and if I see something that reminds me of my time on the show, I go, give me a break. Like mm -hmm. world's smallest violin. You got to be on the biggest, you got to win the biggest TV show and it didn't end with sparkles and roses. Like boo hoo. Yeah. So I think yeah, that, that context is really yeah special to have. To, oh, it to, totally I have, is. I have a friend who passed away. I've talked about him a bunch. One of my best friends passed away from a stroke. And I have like a, even though I wasn't there, I have this weird like survivor guilt where I'm, I go, yeah. man, I can't believe some of the things I complain about yeah. when my life is so good. And now it's important to still feel your feelings and things like that. But putting it into context that we're talking about relatively silly archaic dating show it's uh, very special that you've got this charity that can show people with real issues yeah and no that's a beautiful in, in way learning that there's bigger things than yourself well and like when i so <laughs> in the nicest of ways like there were people who i like i really didn't like on my season right um and 
I thought that Gabby. more or less they got away. With, <laughs> <laughs> um, and more or less, I thought they kind of like got away with murder because like I essentially became like the sacrificial lamb. And a lot of what I talked about in therapy was like, oh, well, you know, like I don't like this or that. Right. And my therapist gave me a rephrasing um, activity that kind of helped me get away from that kind of thinking where it would be more along the lines of like, be thankful that you're not in a place where you would have done X, Y, and C, or like, why are you not in the place? And it's because, you know, you love your job. You love where you live. You love your hobbies. You love your friends. Like maybe those people don't have all these things stacked. So they held on so tightly to this image or this narrative and that that's something like, that's why I try not to go on Instagram as much anymore either. Um, it's just, it's one of those things where I, I'm like, um, I don't know, like what's the, what's like a happy go lucky character? Like, I don't Forrest know, maybe, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh no, that's actually a great one. So like, I'm like a forest guy. Like when I wake up in the morning, I'm like, okay, cool. Like I slept amazing. I'll check my sleep app. I'm like, I slept amazing. Pop out of bed. You know, you, my place is cool. You know, pretty cool. Go down. My company gave me a truck. I'm like, sweet. You know, like I have a truck. Like I love trucks. (laughs) I drive to work. I have a 20 minute commute. Like I'm like walking on sunshine all the way to work. And then I like love my job. Even if I like getting fights all day, I think it's the best job ever. And it's so easy to go on Instagram and be like, Oh, so-and-so from my season, you know, got to go to Paris tomorrow, you know, like, and got to model shoes. That's cool. Yeah. That's cooler than what I did today. Comparison is the uh, thief of joy. Is that the exactly. Like that? But, exactly. No, I mean, it's an energy vampire. It totally Social is. media. I, I've, um, you know, fi- find ways to limit mine by not bringing my cell phone into the bedroom. And I sleep like a baby mm-hmm. um, because I'm not like putting garbage into my soul when I wake up and when I go to bed. Now I obviously make that content around bachelor and all these things. Mm-hmm. So I stay like tapped into it to an extent, but the things that, that, that provide me that sort of like dull energy feeling is when I look at other stand up comedians and see what they're doing. Yeah. And I was, uh, you know, like you're always going to feel like a failure when you compare yourself to a thousand other people. Yeah. Yeah. Because... Like I could, even if I ended up with a million followers, I could follow one of the, like, like Tommy Fury from Love Island and be like, oh, well, let's say me and Rachel broke up and still I ended up with a million followers because everyone took my side. Let's just like hypothetically, Mm -hmm. I could be like, oh, well, you know, he's, he's in a marriage and having a kid and he's a better boxer than me. And, you know, like I could compare till the cows come home to anybody. If it's not him, could be somebody with actual talent, comedian. You know, like, oh man, I wish I had that talent. Like that's so rad that he can get up there and do this. Well, good for you for realizing that you'll never win that game. You'll just never win that game. Well, Instagram's MO is to keep you playing that. Well, I don't don't know if it's probably all social media. Their, Their MO is to keep you playing that game. Yeah. And that's why it's like, for me, it's good to know, even if I'm on a car ride, just to like, all right, it's time for some music. It's time for some therapy. It's time for, you know, like you said, you just maybe enjoying your car ride to work and just finding, you know, so how often do you surf? I try to go. So I'm, I'm trying to learn or I'm not trying to learn. I, I love surfing, but, um, I'm trying to learn Muay Thai right now. So I'm trying to do that four times a week. And then I surf three, like the other three, um, so Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'll almost for sure go. And then I'll sneak in like a Thursday every once in a while. If I'm like, if it's just really nice out and I don't feel like going to the gym, but that's, that's been kind of my, my workout regimen. Uh, have you seen any sharks out there? No, no, no. If I did, I had to hang it up. (laughs) And and did you hear about this? Did you hear about, I mean, I've seen a little one, Braden and Aaron. Um, did you hear this story? Was that Braden? Yeah, oh, Braden fought the, in their their boat sank. Oh Jesus! Sixteen miles off the coast in San Diego. Yeah, Braden's. We we could talk about it. Like, I don't know if you covered it. From the little I've seen, and most of it was from your videos of like what he got trashed for. Like, 
that dude seems really cool and really emotionally intelligent. Like, I don't understand um, why he got any trash. Him and Logan, I think, were were supposed to be easy targets, but I think their charm overcame it. I think they both came to one of my shows, and I think they were just, like, I think people didn't buy in. You know, like, they were, like, early season villains, but, like, I don't think people bought in. I did not get the Logan one at all. Yeah. He had... No, he overcame it. I mean, you know, that, it, yeah. yeah, he would have been a tailor-made villain, but but he was like, no, I'm just going to communicate and be me, and it worked what out. What did he even do that was wrong? Nothing. He just kind of wanted, like, he kind of jumped from one girl. No, I was re- there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he told me Let he was going to do it happened. before. Yeah, but, no, and, and like, I, totally I don't know, fair. but he told me he was going to do that. Like, you know, I was like, do you really think you're going to go over there and beat, like, Eric and Jason and all these but the, you but know, he knew see, it, he knew with Rachel it wasn't. In, he that, knew that wasn't. Yeah, he so. knew it wasn't Rachel. But like, I mean, Rachel was sending guys home every week. I mean, w- what's the difference? Yeah. So it was just it was a weird edit that he got. Like, th- there was a lot of weirdness on our season. Like the guy who got second with Gabby, Jason, good friend of mine. He'd probably do this if you want me to nice text guy, him. Nice guy. Yeah. Super nice guy. I feel like that guy got less screen time than like. Logan or you know like Tyler like it was and he was really in the running with Gabby it was very strange you have a um season group chat yeah and then you have a and then you have a season group chat with the guys you actually like like within the group chat (laughs) everyone's got my family's got that Uh, the family group chat and then we got the family that's not a psycho group chat the guys that I take like the guys that I spend time with like and it's not that like I by any means like don't like hanging out like they don't have as many similar hobbies as me Mm -hmm. um so it's hard like like Braden wants to go surfing all the time and he goes up to San Onofre so like I want like I will probably spend more time than him than anyone else from my season Mm. ironically but it's um and we haven't gone surfing yet but I, I want to um yeah that'd be a fun pairing yeah totally well here's the question everyone's asking it doesn't involve you but one of the biggest questions from your season is everyone wants to know what the hell happened between Zach and Rachel in the fantasy suite. And is that just something that people are going to take to the grave or was she just not into him at all? I don't know. Like, I mean, so <laughs> here's, here's my taste of it. Right. And this is this, like, here's the, like, I believed what Rachel told me and what the producers told the producers I'm sure we're telling Zach, like, this game is yours. And they were telling Avon that. And they were telling me that. Like, sure, you know, sure. like, we all were really into her. And they were like, yeah, shoot, man, you might be the one. Like, And it only what works if now? everyone believes. Yeah. Um, I think probably at that point... This is... You know, I don't, I don't really know or care if I'm going to rub people the wrong way saying this. I think... It, that point and i don't remember the order of that week she was stoked on avon she thought tino's the one but he could f this up you know so and then she was like i'm i'm pretty sure it's not zach and then they probably it through their date it probably got reinforced somehow where it was just like oh shoot, this really isn't the guy. And then you're kind of in this weird situation where, you know, you, you want to have some off camera time cause you want to like get to know them a little bit more off camera. But then there's like, you know, Zach had to deal with it. There's like people assume things when you go to the overnights. Um, yeah. so I think it just got like super awkward probably that the line, you know, there, there probably was like lines drawn. And then beyond that, it was like a bunch of like penetrating questions because she already maybe already knew like well i know he's you know like we're not going to line on this this and this um and then you know she has one with me and then she kind of like is already ready like okay you know like I, I was right it's it's him yeah if he butchers it with my family you know it's avon or vice versa who yeah, knows because yeah, yeah. like the way it got edited like a lot of people were like, oh my God, she was going to pick Avon. Like he just wasn't ready. And I was like, I don't know what you, like, obviously I, I was reading a different story here, but like, I thought it was me and that's, that's fine. Even if it's not, it's fine. It's neither. Yeah, of us and like, Who her. wouldn't go to the fantasy suite and try to 
uh, pursue other options just to make sure. I mean, yeah. when I interviewed Brian Abasolo, he talked about how like Rachel Lindsay had all these questions for him, and mm -hmm. it's like you know that's it's it's a lot of pressure, you know, in that circumstance. So, uh, and also the way uh, the way you kind of saw Zach talk to maybe Gabby on his season, you kind of got like an idea that it could be I could see Zach not having a very productive conversation with Rachel if he's trying to be like assertive into what he wants because like she's the star of the season. So anyway, you, it's just funny as an audience, you watch them go into the Vinny C-suites and then come out in a different mood and you're like, whoa! And that's just been this, the audience has just been sort of perplexed by not having the the loop closed where you go, all right, that's why it ended. But it's not for us to know. Some yeah. things are just better off, you know, <laughs> left Yeah, the, the whole fantasy suite thing, that is a... A gnarly, gnarly week. Um, <laughs> you know, because and like the the biggest mistake I think I, I just don't understand is like when people come like like I remember on mine like I had a conversation with I was like, look, whatever happens in here stays in here. I don't want to know what happened with you and anybody else because you know the whole thing with Clayton where he came and spilled the beans on everyone. It was one of those things where I made it very clear. I was like, look, I don't need to know. You didn't do anything wrong. This is this is part of the experience. I don't want to know. Like, let's just leave it at that. And please, for the love of God, do not tell anybody what we did in here. Like, I think respectfully, like, that's not fair to me. And, you know, she she did a great job at that. So it was Yeah, good. I think she did yeah. a really good job. And and you you can see how good of a job someone does when you see it bad. Like, Zach obviously ended up mentioning you know he, he gabby yeah, says she felt like he violated necessary. yeah so you can just kind of have her back on that one <laughs> yeah and can... i think zach's the nicest guy ever i oh, just sure. i think i think well similar to my situation like i think zach got it in his head that he did something wrong and it like i think as a viewer or like somebody outside you're like watching it like a like a car accident where you're like no you didn't like you didn't do anything wrong yeah. like just, just let it go. But I, I think maybe after that night, he like, I mean, in no offense to anybody, when I say this, I, my theory is he probably was like, Oh shit, it really is Katie. And she's going to see this one day. So I need yeah. to tell her now. And, and so he might've done yeah. the whole like crack an egg to make an omelet. Uh -huh. So he burnt it with, with mm -hmm. Gabby and obviously, you know, was trying to defend the relationship he knew was the right one. It's a tough role. Dude. Well, we, we did our lap. Thanks for, uh, thanks for letting me ride with you down here in Newport beach. And, yeah, um, absolutely. uh, how can people support you and support your charity and all of that? Uh, I mean, you could just go to my Instagram and I, I post about them when we have events and stuff. So yeah, I mean, that, that's probably the best way to do it. Sounds good. Yeah. Dude, well, thanks so much for being on the show, man. I really appreciate it.